How's it going and welcome back to another video. So we've all seen those pictures where two water droplets are colliding in midair and it makes for a cool explosion looking effect. Anybody can take those pictures, but it takes the right equipment. You can't just time it and take a picture yourself and happen to drip the water in the exact spot. It takes a little bit of a setup and a little bit of gear to get those kind of pictures. Most of the time, it's crazy expensive to get into that. There's, there you can be two, three, five, six hundred dollars way too much money to try and take those kind of pictures. But today I've got another solution that comes in a lot cheaper to a point. This is the Pluto trigger right here and it is a remote shutter trigger that you mount to the top of your camera. It comes with any cord specified for your camera type. This little thing here pairs with an app that you can get for your phone and it triggers the shutter for your camera based on a variety of different criteria, whether that's light or a laser or sound or lightning. You can set it to do time lapses. You can set up all kinds of different things through the app to trigger the shutter whenever you want. It's really cool. It seems quite powerful and you can get really nitty gritty into the details with it if you want to do that. <clears throat> but today we're not going to worry about any of those other settings. We are only going to focus on the water droplet module. And that's this right here. The, the battery itself didn't come with it. I had to go out and buy a 1223 battery, which I'd never heard of. It's some little kind of camera battery. And uh, what this does, you can just turn it on, push the button, and you can hear a little solenoid actuating in there that drips the water out the bottom. You can also plug in the Pluto trigger with the provided cord and it can trigger the drops up to two drops in different intervals to try and get the collision in midair like what we're gunning for today. So let's go set it up and see what we can do. All right, so as you can see, we're all set up now. I've got the Pluto trigger mounted on the A6500 hooked up with the provided cord. There's this other cord that comes with the dripper kit and it also comes with this clamp arm that you see right up here. When you switch this on, there's a button on the side of it that you can press. So what I like to do to make sure I get focus is to see exactly where the drop hits the water, put my finger in the water there, and then focus the camera accordingly. From here, we can kind of move forward, adjust it as needed based on the results we get. <clears throat> so we turn on the Pluto trigger. A couple of things I learned about doing this is that you want a dark space and you need to use the flash. What the, the instinct is to get lots of light make it super bright and turn your shutter speed all the way up as fast as it'll go. However, that is still not as fast as your flash is going to be. So even though you've got a slower shutter speed that's 1 60th, the flash will flash and be a lot faster than any shutter speed you can achieve and freeze everything exactly where it is. And because everything else is so dark, it won't pick up any additional movement except for when that flash goes off. So as soon as you open up the app, it'll connect to the Pluto trigger if it's on. It's connected by Bluetooth, so you're going to want to make sure that that's also turned on. You go into the menu to the left and you select the droplet mode. This mode will give you the settings necessary to activate the dropper as well as time it very precisely between the first drop, the second drop, and the shutter speed in order to try and get a collision. The first option is flash delay, which will delay between the first drop and when the shutter actuates. You, you can change the drop size. You can also change drop to delay as well as the drop to size. So what I like to do is after it gets connected, we can hit the play button and it will, ooh, that one actually turned out pretty good. And it will actuate the dropper as well as the shutter. That one was done without a flash. So it was against what I just told you to do. And so the ISO had to crank way up to compensate for it. But I'll go ahead and show you that picture right now. It's still a little bit out of focus. The key to this is making small adjustments until you get something close and then moving on to the next thing. You don't want to be messing with the drop to delay, the drop size and the flash delay all at once because you're not going to make any progress. Everything's going to change and you're going to have to start from scratch. So what you want to do is start with only the shutter delay and work backwards from there. I'm still slightly out of focus, but let's give it another shot. Another note is you're going to want to be in manual for this, otherwise it will try and focus or it just doesn't quite work right with the trigger. The trigger likes everything to be manual, so it's got all the control. So there you go. You can see that uh, 
I haven't turned the lights off yet, obviously, but you can see how you can see the smearing behind the crystal clear image. And uh, so when you turn off the lights, that smeariness should go away and it will yield a nice clean result. The way that I like to try and get this lined up just right is I actually watch the drop and listen to the camera. I don't look at the after image and try to adjust. If you watch it at the beginning, you can actually see where the drop is when the shutter fires. So that actually lets you make large adjustments and looking at the result allows you to make small adjustments. There we go. That's what we want to see and that's what we want to aim the second droplet at. So it's really close as you can see in that picture there we have got the center. When the drop goes down it goes in and makes a cavity. When that cavity comes together a little drop shoots up. That's what we want to see before we turn on the second drop. So I'm going to go ahead and delay the flash a little bit longer. So now we can turn on the second droplet. What we're going to do is just turn up the delay and give it a shot. We don't really know what we're going to get. With the second droplet you want to do the same thing you did in the first one. You can actually see where the second droplet is while it's dropping and listen to the camera watch the flash and you can see where it is and sometimes you can even see the impact when it happens. So that's the best way to get it close. You can fine tune it later in the app. Okay, my second drop is coming down too fast. I have to delay it just a little bit longer. All right, so I'm getting pretty close. So I'm gonna head and turn off the lights, stop the camera, and I'll be back once I capture a few shots. This is really where it gets nitty gritty and you just have to make slight adjustments until you get onto something good. From there, you can really fine tune it and tweak it and get exactly the image that you want. Now, some people also add uh, colors in front of their flash, alternative flashes, all kinds of different things to try and enhance the image, make it a little bit more artistic. And I absolutely encourage doing that because that'll make this picture that much cooler. But I don't have those things right now, so I'm just gonna go for a standard collision. So I'll be back in a minute. Alright, well some of those shots turned out really cool and there's always a different one. None of them are the same. Some of them are similar, but not the same. So if you're interested in the Pluto trigger here or this module, check the links down in the description. I'll link them down there for you guys. Also, if you want to see what else the Pluto trigger can do, go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss my next videos using this cool little gadget. But thanks for watching and hopefully you guys like this video and we'll see you in the next one.